Hello, and this is the Warp Forge with the 90th video of the channel. So, wow, over 200 subscribers already and on 90 videos. That's a lot of videos to take in, viewers. Wow, all solidly on the hobby we all know and love. So, what's this video going to be about? Well, as the 90th video, I want to do something a little bit more special. Obviously, it's not the 100th video, which I might do a massive battle report on, I'm not too sure yet. But uh, since the 90th video, I just wanted to show off something special that I've recently just got. And that is a Horus Heresy uh, box. It is a collector's edition box kind of thing. It's uh, one of the Primarchs. Now, obviously, this is part of the Ave Dominatus Knox project. So, guess who it is? <laughs> and basically, at first I was a very surprised at the box. I thought the box was going to be around about like this size but it's absolutely gigantic. It is massively, it is huge. I didn't realise it was going to be this big. I thought literally like just something I could grab with my hand around but uh, no it's very big, very bulky and stuff. So we'll uh, unravel the mystery behind it. Da -da 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 -da. Yep, that, that's right. It is if I can put the lid on right, Conrad Kurz, which I am absolutely grateful for, as this was a birthday, oh sorry, as this was a birthday present, so I am very, very, very grateful for uh, Conrad Kurz, and I also got the Terror Squad as well, as part of like the Legion bundle, Pride of the Legion, which I am insanely grateful for, quite literally as a Chaos Marine player, <laughs> so yeah. What I'm going to do is, I'm, this is going to be an unboxing video, and I'm going to basically just show off the model in all its glory. Now, as far as you know, this was shrink-wrapped. I had to unbox it, make sure there was, like, no miscasts and all that. But everything's back to where it was originally put. So, first off, we have the little note on the back here. If we can get the uh, information down. Yep, as we see. And on the front is the painted version, so rear view, front view, and it's absolutely brilliant. Not sure what that is, uh, not sure if that's like an easter egg or a voucher or whatever. I'll have to check, I'm not too sure about the whole scanning thing. So, we go on to the first thing, and uh, it's very wedged in tight. As you see, it's very uh, cl cleanly in there. It's very fl flush fits, it's just grabbing it out as we see so we'll open this and if we can actually get into it <laughs> so as we see we'll go to the first piece and I'll basically cut the video so that you can show each bit individually so I'll just pause the video now okay so I've had to basically put the light on so that you won't get any grain and these are just basically the hand joints and the little throne knife here. As we as we know, these are like the hidden blades, like the Assassin's Creed like esque blades Kurz has. We have his actual little claw hands over here. So they are like two parts, but uh I have no problem with that because they are awesome. They are really, really awesome. I think those are two separate sets of ha fingers, so you can choose whichever one to have. No, actually, sorry, I mistake. Sorry, that's my problem. That's for one of the corpses on his big base. So that hand's for one of the corpses on his big base, and the rest are basically for his hands and his uh, hidden blades and stuff. So we will move on to the next part. Okay, so we now have his cape, and this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite overwhelmed with this cape, only because it's all of a uh, rotten fl well flayed flesh and I'm not the best at fleshes and I'm not the best at fabrics and capes so <laughs> this is going to be one hell of a challenge but I really want this to work so I'll, I'll be spending many weeks at my model club just uh, asking for help of how what techniques to use on robes and capes and rotten flesh and bones and stuff apart from that as you see the Details quite crisp. There are quite a bit. There is quite a bit of flash, but it's easily uh, cleaned up. 
just a little bit of a knife or even just like a file you don't need to file it just just scrape it a little bit just lightly scrape it and it should just disappear like that so yeah that is the cape we'll uh, move on to another piece and we have one of the uh, guardsman corpses now uh, solar auxilia I think they're called but instantly this is really awesome this is like oh yeah it's all steampunky with all the gears and cogs it's steampunk in space you've got really like retractable power fist that the night haunt is just that's where the other hand goes and the night haunt has just ripped him apart because he's cruel and vicious like that and totally berserk <laughs> but uh yeah as you can see the detail you've got the little uh Imperial Eagle there, which is full on Imperium of Man of the 31st Millennium, and it's absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love this. I love the model in all its glory. So we'll move on to the next piece. Okay, so the next piece is these bits. So these are his actual arms, and his arms are absolutely magnificent. You can t instantly see where all the blades and the hands go. You've got this little piece here, which is like armor plating. If this will zoom in, yep. Got this little piece, which is armor plating, which is absolutely gorgeous. You can see where the mold goes, so hopefully it should be plush fit. This is probably the head to the corpse I've just shown, and Conrad Kurz's face. Now, believe it or not, it might sound a bit silly, this, but the head's the the thing I've been looking forward to painting the most, or just look forward to seeing. I don't know. I I think it's because. It, the Primarchs have been such a wanted item from 40k fans for a long, long time. I just, especially with the Night Lords, I really like them and stuff. And I've always liked the features of Kurz, of his facial features and stuff. Because he always, to me, he always looked like some, like some creepy form of the Emperor. And the Emperor always, like, to me, looked a bit like Jesus. So Conrad Kurz always looked like a bit like a creepy Jesus to me. But, uh... Obviously, everyone's opinions differ. So it's, I think it's just with the black hair and the uh, pale, narrow expression that he has. It just makes him look creepy and morbid, just as he should be. So it's very uh, truthful to the background of the stories and stuff. With this uh, model, I will be doing more on... Well, I will be doing the Nostrama flesh on Kurz, because I know on the Forge World images, he's just got normal, like, white flesh, but I want to do pale, like, the pale, greyish, whitish Nostrama skin that is usually depicted in the Black Library novels. So I want to do that for Kurz with, like, the black eyes. No, Like, I'm not sure if they had pupils, but I remember that he, he, they definitely had black eyes. So I'm definitely doing Nostrama flesh on Curse to represent that he's basically just lived in eternal darkness for like so so long so after that we'll move on to the next piece okay so we have the second corpse which is oh you just go really like i am going to have so much fun with the blood for the blood god technical just the way the uh skin shows from armor to skin to bone and muscle it's just like you say there's a lot of flash but a little bit of a file and a little bit of a cleaning should take it off have washed it so hopefully the paint should stick on after washing it in hot soapy water so yeah like i say they've got textures of the boots they've got it all right it's literally just sticking them on the base so Obviously, I'm going to paint this bits by bits. I'm not going to build it all in one, then paint them, because that's going to cause so much uh, irritation when I'll have to paint over things, because I'm not going to lie, I'm a messy painter. I go over, find details accidentally, and I have to repaint them. That takes time, and I end up getting frustrated, just as any other painter would do. <laughs> so, uh, like I say, I really want to take the time into this. I'm estimating a month's worth of painting into curves uh, and i'll admit that's probably an exaggeration but i just want to be best prepared so i've told all my friends like i say i will be playing with curves but i won't be playing them unpainted i want them painted before i do anything with them because 
I feel it'll just be more rewarding if I paint them first than uh, play them because it'll just look awesome. I've already, well, I've already had a challenge issue to us from uh, Angron. <laughs> so, uh, so his first uh, Primark opponent will be Angron. Let's see who can win the Lord of the Night, Night Horton himself, or the Butcher's Nails Angron. So, we'll move on to the next piece. And these are the Night Haunter's shoulder pads, and can I just say I absolutely love these. <laughs> they are absolutely um, adorable, well, I won't say adorable, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, they just go in. You've, you've got the little moulds so that they just slot in place. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that, viewers. Oh, apologies for that. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love. I love the uh, wings, the bat wings. How everything's so gothic with the uh, Kurz's armor. It's like I think I might like them because I liked vampire counts back in fantasy, and I think that's probably partially it with the gothic architecture that they use for the night lords. I absolutely love it. And I just think these will be so fun to paint. It's just, like I say, I don't know like what I want to do with uh, the trims and stuff. So these bits, when I'm painting, I'm thinking like, I want to keep true to the story, but I also want to keep it true to uh, the painting in, on the front of the, well, what the Forge World image, images uh, provide. So I'm just using both of those as a template to paint my own curves. But at the moment, it's literally just a case of, uh, I have no idea how to paint this, so I will be brainstorming ideas and techniques, and I will be watching an infinite amount of painting tutorial videos. So, we'll move on to the next piece now. And this is one half of his base, because, obviously, Kurz is on, like, a Terminator base. And with the Terminator bases, you slot it into the bigger base, and then this slots in around where you've just inserted the Terminator base, as you see by the uh, little mold line. Obviously, you don't glue it in place unless you just want it as a collector's piece, but since I'm playing with Curse, I want to keep them on. I want to use them on a regular basis, hopefully. So, uh, like I say, it's just a case of... It's that it goes around it just slots in so it makes the whole piece feel natural but as you see there the rocks really nice detail you can tell like either they've used a lot of solder and or just burned something but at the same time like either sculpted all the damage on it's just the, like i say it's just the little like round bricks that contrast with, like the actual square bricks and stuff it's it's nice it's Oh, me very very nice so we'll move on to the next piece so as you see here we have the terminator base and we have like the big uh, dreadnought size base the big dreadnought size base is for the display to be glued on and that's for the game and purposes base where you glue it on to the to that base to play around with nothing much i can really say about these so on to the next piece and so, wow, well, as we see here, boys and girls, all heretics alike, this is the stand where Kurz is glued onto. This is where you glue the Terminator base onto on the bottom, as you can see by the small representation of a uh, area. And can I just say it's absolutely wonderful. It's nice that it's just like part of an arch, adding more to that gothic architecture, to that gothic atmosphere Kurz has. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to painting this. I'm not sure what I'm going to paint it as, because I know people use airbrushes for the uh, gothic architecture on uh, Kurz's base, and as somebody who doesn't have an airbrush, <laughs> I think I'm just going to go for plain, really, really cold stone uh, architecture. And I'm probably just, I'm going to make it a little bit different and use and put like snow around it, so it adds to that cold atmosphere that I'm wanting. So uh, make it look really cold to really contrast with the theme of like Kurz forever in darkness kind of thing that he has going for him. So I can't really say much more about this piece. So move on to the next piece. And one more. This is the big, big 50 mil. Well, the big dreadnought size base, as you can see by its 
size. I kind of want to give you a little bit of a size comparison. So if I can zoom out. Nope. Apparently that's not how it goes. So I'm just going to get it Raptor. And I'm going to show you the size. So you've got the Raptor here. And you've got the uh, base. It's really, really large. As you can see, it is absolutely massive where everything goes. You can see the steps up here, all the rubble, because Night Lords like to attack, go for the weak points. Where the wolves go for the throat, the Night Lords go for the eyes. So I'm just showing that for size comparison, but uh, yeah, as you can see, there's been a lot of work into this. You can feel the texture of the brickwork that's all grainy and destroyed, and it's just, oh... It's just like, I feel like Homer Simpson when he sees bacon. It is absolutely gorgeous. You've got the skeleton here, which I'm thinking I might uh, do some red around the uh, skeleton. Only because, like, just gore, just strip it full of gore, because, like, it's just recently been flayed. But, uh, like I say, that's where the other bit goes. So you put the Terminator base in, and then you put the other bit here. And as you can see, you've got little like mold molds here, so that it looks like a clean connection, so that it looks natural esque enough in its destruction, so it doesn't break the immersion when you look at the model. But uh, like I say, again, the Gothic architecture, it's absolutely great. If I could put snow in this and have the red gore on top of the snow, it would really, really contrast, and it would give you a really cold atmosphere for curves. Like I say, I'm licking my lips because. Curse's Kurz, model is like when Homer Simpson sees bacon for me. I absolutely adore it. Like I would like it if he if he could actually stand up on his own without the uh, arch base, but for what it is, I absolutely adore it. So we'll move on to the next piece. And finally, saving the best till last, the body. And this is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the best bits. Like for me it goes the uh, head, this piece, and then it goes to the uh, base work and the arms. Like I say, it's just the whole gothic vampire, gothic horror architecture it has. I'm sure there's been refer references to Dracula for the... Uh, Night Lords at some point. I mean, yeah, they're not like Blood Angels where they go, Black Rage, I'm a vampire. Thirst, thirst. But, uh, like I say, they've got the back, they've got the gothic appearance, they've got the bat exterior, the whole thing about being a massive bat in the darkness, delivering justice through a Batman gothic esque appearance with an attitude of the Punisher. Just everything right for, went for me with the Night Lords. I just absolutely adore them. And this is, well, his body's just a reflection. I love this little collar here that he has. It's just, I don't know what it is. I think it's just like, again, it's the Gothic-esque atmosphere it gives off to the whole model. The idea that it's quite medieval, like little pads like that on his uh, torso and that. So it's like, and like the little archways on his legs, just the amount of detail on this is absolutely stunning. Absolutely enjoying this. This is just like one of my favourite models. And honestly, this is probably like now my officially most prized miniature in my whole collection. So I love it. I Apologies about that. Uh, Cameron decided to cut off and said that the uh, recording size was at maximum. Like I say... The uh, archwork is absolutely fantastic. The gothic architecture, it feels medieval-esque, like he is the medieval torturer kind of thing. And I absolutely, I just love his whole appearance. He is called death at the end of the day. He's not in your face, brutal like Angron. And he's not the morally just hero like the lion or Dawn, who I still think is like, yeah, the guy who nicks everyone else's ideas, but still. <laughs> yeah, I don't really... Like, I like Sigismund, but I don't really like Dawn. <laughs> so it's a little bit weird with the Imperial Fists, but alas. I like Kurz, and I think when I build all this, all this model up, when I glue it in, and when I painted him, he'll look fantastic, and I will really, really enjoy him. So... 
basically now it's just let's see what happens to him on the table let's hope to heck that he busts some skulls and uh, flays some people with a fell swing of his blades so if you like this video this unboxing video and you want to see more progress into the Ave Dominatus Nox project then please hit the subscribe button and if you liked what you see give this video a like if you want to talk about curves or anything about the Ave Dominatus Nox project or more then please just give it a comment section below and if you want to and you want more people to see what they're getting for curves then uh, give this video a share and spread the word of the Warp Forge so this is the Warp Forge signing out and remember keep on forging.